the doTERRA 10th Anniversary Dream Convention Performer. Hollywood, 
business. Every movie, number one and number two, is California and New York in terms of attendance because of the amount of people. Utah normally ranks around about 30. For The Greatest Showman, it ranks at number three, almost number two. So thank you, Utah. And this is the first time I've sung it publicly in the United States, apart from in the movie, so I felt fit to be here for you. At 11.30 in the morning. We're going to get this party started. Now, I know there's some Aussies here. I know there are Aussies. They're a very shy bunch, the Aussies. Campbell, put on stage before. Good job, Campbell. Now, I want to give you a tip. If you ever want to find Aussies anywhere, this is what you do. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Oh. <laughs> or just go to any pub and find them. But, this whole week, weekend, three days, that I am absolutely honoured to be part of, is about dreaming. I'm very, very honoured and I'm very grateful to Emily, to Corey, to everybody at Doterra. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, and my wife. My wife, Deborah Lee, who is always right, says the Terra Oils are the best. So, I know there's a lot of wellness advocates here. If you want to get your sales numbers up, just go and bump into Deborah Lee anywhere. You will literally become the number one salesperson in the company. Just saying. But this is all about dreaming, and that is something I firmly believe in. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I made The Greatest Showman. To me, it's a... Uh, it's an homage to one of the great dreamers, one of the great uh, imaginative, creative people that America ever produced. And he changed entertainment forever. And the other, I'm one of those people who dreamed my whole life of being in movie musicals, of being in movies. I didn't think it was possible when I started in Hollywood in 1999. Movie musicals were kind of not around, so uh, I'm absolutely thrilled the greatest show that happened, but one of the big turning points for me was being in the movie Les Miserables in 2004. I would like to sing a song from that. We're going to have a bit of a chat later. And you're going to have to shut me up, I'm a, a bit of a talker, so just feel free. Aussies, you're good at Just say, shut up. Shut up and sing. So, uh, oh, yeah, see? Shut up, sing. Uh, I want to sing a song for my niece. To me, it's one of the great musicals ever written. It's from one of the great stories ever written by Victor Hugo, one of the great characters in Jean Valjean that I play. It's a story about grace. It's a story about redemption. And I think it's a tale for every single one of us to know that no matter how hard life is, that there is always a path for us, that there is always a spirit following and watching us and that opportunity for grace, no matter how far we've fallen, is always there. And this first song I would like to sing, which is early on in the, the movie. My character Jean Valjean stole a loaf of bread to feed his sister's son. He was sentenced to 19 years of hard labor. And when I say hard labor, brutal. The, the object of prisons back then was to turn you into an animal so that when you were released, the public would see that you are an animal and to serve as a warning for everybody else. So immediately upon his release, he was taken in by a very kind and loving bishop. And almost immediately after being taken in by him, he did the unthinkable and Jean Valjean stole a 